Today I'm talking about tailwater fly fishing tactics for monster trout on Montana's incredible Beaverhead River. Oh, there yep, we go. Yep, there we are. Oh, oh. what like a, a slap, shark, wasn't dude. It? What a slap. And I'll show you some nymphing techniques that absolutely slay. Yes. Yeah. Big round, wow, dude. Wow, big fatty. Dude. Hey everybody, welcome to Familiar Waters. I'm Mike Pulaski and today is going to be awesome. We are fishing the Beaverhead River, western Montana, just outside of Dillon. And it is one of my favorite fisheries in the whole United States. It's a tailwater and tailwater tactics differ from freestone streams. The reason for that is there is a ton of biomass inside of tailwaters. And so they can produce some monster fish, but they also get pretty technical. And so we're going to talk about technicality of it. We're going to talk about the bugs. We're going to talk about the strategies in terms of techniques that we fish out there and hopefully helping you become a better fisherman on tailwater rivers. There's so many of them nowadays. Our tailwaters tend to be some of our best fisheries in the entire country. Before we get started, if you haven't done it yet, make sure you subscribe and click that bell so you get notified anytime we have new stuff coming out. Give me a thumbs up. I would love to hear from you. If you fish the beeve, give me a thumbs up. If you want to fish the beeve, give me a thumbs up. If you're not giving me a thumbs up on that, you're crazy because beeve is awesome. And leave me any comments down below. So now let's get started. We are right up top on the beeve, just downstream from the dam. Uh, and we're fishing a fantastic piece of water loaded with monster trout. Dynamic change, brother. Yeah. You can't be status. Right there, bro. Oh, we just got ripped, There it is. Dude. I got... Trying to get back in those weeds. Yeah, they'll tunnel. Yeah, that's what he's trying to do. And we got soft water there down goes. here on this front left, baby. Here we go. Wait a wait to go, dude. Wait to go. Let me know if we need to chase him. This is great. Still inside of the boat ramp. He's good right now. He's still trying to find the weeds. We got heavy, dense vegetation underneath us. And it's those river weeds that flow down off the rocks, and these fish are finding a way to get back up into them and trying to bury and rub this line off their face. Beaverhead fish, famous for finding a way to rub the fly out of their mouth. Fished here about five years ago, and I had three fish in a row take the same exact path around the same exact rock. Keep tip up, Mike. Not a poon, baby. It, it's up. And think soft water left side. Let me know when he's ready, brother. Uh, he I just don't think saw he's the boat. Yet. He's going down. I'm mocking you. Made some up on him there. He's got some uh, girth to him. Yeah, man. Oh, nice fish, dude. He had a big flash to him. If you need to jam that rod in the willows, man, put it over there. Wow, he is using all that current. Let me know when he's ready. We'll go down and get him. Okay, he's, he's uh, starting to plane. Oh, nice bow. Let's see if I can get that head up for you. Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the way it started off right Fat there. Fat rainbow. Wow! Woo! Man, look how thick that fish right is. Right in the face, brother. Oh! Ho, ho, ho. This is a Hold that big, that fat thing. football of a rainbow. No uh, wonder he felt so heavy. I don't know how it's a female. Nice job, man. These fish are definitely not on the Atkins diet. Oh, man. Okay, there it is, brother. Let's go this side. She's hook scarred. 
Yeah. Here. Yeah, man. This is what we would be fishing for all day long. Wow, I can't even get my hands around there. Big, gorgeous. So, look at that. We're gonna shine on that fish. I don't think they fight those 20, did it? What's really, that? It's close. How big is that? She's not very long, but she sure is round. She She's is got a round. fly caught in her tail. Cool, man. Yeah, that's we the way good? to start it off. That is the way to start it off. This water's kind of warm. Just let her get out of there on her own free will. Start her off. We're out here fishing the beaverhead today, in southwestern Montana, and I'm with my favorite guide of all time, dude man, Mike Bias. And we have fished pretty much everything around here. Yeah. Time and yeah. time again. But this river is special. It has huge fish, there's a ton of insects in the water, there's all kinds of trout food out here. And fishing the beav is one of those special trips that you make to come out here for giant fish and I'm just looking forward to the day. We just kicked it off. That's our first fish. This That's pretty nice, sick. man. That's gonna pretty be sick. nice. Hopefully it'll be lights out like that. That was awesome, dude. She ripped that bottom fly out. I'll put yep. another one on. That ain't the way to kick it off. I do not know what is. I told you, Mike Bias is one of my favorite people on the stream in the woods. Just a fantastic dude. So I'm gonna let you meet him as he tells us about the beave, his home water. So Mike, um, one of the things here, we fished together on the Henry's Fork a lot and walked the boat. I'm like the only, <laughs> you'll see walking the boat out here, it's kind of funny. But we're walking down these runs and it, every square inch is good fishing. So um, the way to cover water is just for me to move the boat around. You just keep working those slots. Giant rainbows, giant rainbows. And they're gonna rip you. Occasional brown, but usually up here it's bows. And we're just working these soft seam lines, you know? But we're throwing size 20 nymphs off a of 3X. So you get 2020 club when you land one. <laughs> Either 20, I'm not talking 20 inches, I'm talking 20 pounds. <laughs> 20 inches, size 20 nymphs. A 20-inch trout on a size 20 fly is a pretty big deal. That's a small hook for a big fish. But there's a reason these fish are, are taking these small bugs. Especially in tailwaters, these fish tend to get dialed into smaller flies. And tailwaters have more biomass because they're coming out of lakes uh, that let that silt, the extra kind of dirt and nutrients and everything, filter down into the rivers. For me, the tailwaters that come out of a little bit shallower lakes with some agriculture around them tend to be the most prolific in terms of fish, in terms of insect life, in terms of stream grass. And so that's what you're looking for. And the beeve's a perfect example of that coming out of Clark Canyon Reservoir. But I'm going to show you why they're focusing on these little bugs. So this is why the beaver head is so prolific. You see, you've got this stream grass everywhere. And in the stream grass, you've got just masses of these insects. And as you pull it apart, you can see these, this is a scud right here. About a size 18 or 20 scud. And they're everywhere in here. Another scud. That's all first class trout food. Look at my hand just from holding the grass. You can see how many bugs are on there. I mean, that is all protein. That's what these fish are eating. And it makes for an incredibly healthy river. This, this grass is just alive with caddis. And I see stoneflies. Here's a mayfly right here. 
I mean, it's just silly how many insects and how many crustaceans and snails and just life in this grass. And that's what makes it such a great place to fish. I'll shake it out and feed the trout downstream. Yeah, they're gonna like you. So you get all these small bugs in the drift and the fish get dialed down to that size 18, size 20. And so what's the key? Well, the key is getting your drifts, getting in front of the fish. And so getting your depth right under your indicator uh, and making sure that you're picking your slots. Some people think it's all about covering a lot of water and it's really not a piece of like right river like there. this. There's so many fish per oh, linear mile that, that yeah, it's about covering the water that you're on extremely well. So the trick is picking your lanes, finding your spots, putting your bugs in the right position, and then getting a super clean drift all the way through. Now I want to try something new, what I call my trout telestrator, or my trout strator. We'll figure that one out later. But let's talk about this river. We talked about the biomass, and what we're looking at is you can see the green weeds underneath. And so those are all holding lanes where those fish will hold. The darker spots that you're seeing on the bottom are your rocks. Stuff like this are bigger rocks that are poking through. All of those are places that fish will hold. And so I'm trying to get my cast up here above the boat and then immediately throw a stack mend on top of it so I can run my drift down along the sides of these weed beds and then I want to bring it back down through those weed beds because those fish will hang in the pockets as well. And then I want to cover the far side of those weed beds and let my bugs kind of meander through. When it gets down to the bottom, you'll see I'll let it run all the way out. I'll get tight to it, get a strip, and then pop it back upstream. Oh, there yep, we go. Yep, there we are. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, what like a, a slab, dude. What a slab. Oh, where are you going? Hang on, brother. Hang on, brother. Well, he ran right at me. Took the slack out of the rod. You're getting smarter. He's on the reel now. He doesn't know the boat's here yet, bro. So we've been fishing the same run here. There's a bunch of really big fish stacked in here. We just took a little break. Mike told me he wanted to let the fish rest a little bit, so we tied on a different <laughs> fly. And second cast through. Lean this down guy's river, brown. Way, dude. Looks brown. like a brown. Big brown. Yeah. Oh, he's trying to bury me now. Get your head up over here. He's trying to bury me. He's trying to get that nose down. Lean down a little bit. I don't want to get those weeds on it. Let me know if he's ready. Browns are a little more toads. Yeah, he's trying to see him trying to rub it off on the ground. Yeah. I don't they think don't he's ready. Run, Mike. Picked up some weeds. Yeah. And these things are heavy enough to give your shoulder a workout. Lean them down river a little bit. There you go. We'll get them around this tree. Yeah. There he is. Yes. yes. Big brown. Wow. Dude. Big fatty. And this is uh. Dude. As you can see this morning, that is. No doctor in the tape here. This is, these are the fish that we've been hooking this morning. No small fish in between them. Just pigs, and it takes a few casts. He's on that little PMD, man. Look at that net phone. Yep. Oh. Just a big football-sized brown. It's nice getting browns up here. We don't get many browns in this run. The water up here is colder, and browns tend to be more tolerant of the warmer waters. That's why if you see a river that's been running low and warm for a while, 
population will tend to skew more towards the brown. He's all set, dude. What a fish. I got the net. Do you want to, you want to drop him? Drop him over this. Oh, The, the man. great Pulaski release. They're just so muscular. That's so awesome, dude. Fat. And healthy. They're just fat. You can see why this river is a tailwater. And tailwaters have more constant flows, more consistent flows. And with the consistent flows, you get the vegetation and you get the bug life. Look at that, man. Wow. He's tough. And especially at elevation like this, a tailwater fishery will tend to produce bigger fish because you get the food that comes out of the lake. Come on, dude. And you get the natural insects that occur in streams, so you get an abundance of biomass in here. But the beaver head just doesn't disappoint. We have fished about 200 yards of the beaver head so far, and we got a bunch of river downstream. Four miles. Four miles. <laughs> nice. Nice. Well, that does it for my first 200 yards of drift on the Beav. We're going to have a bunch from this river because of a lot more tailwater tactics I want to talk to you guys about. And so we'll be bringing you that coming up. Don't forget, you can go to fwfishing.com. I'll show you the bugs that we use. The link will be down in the description section down below. I'll show you how to tie them, kind of give you some stuff on the river and on the bugs in the area. And you can always go there for more information. We got tactics on nymphing. We got stuff on streamer fishing. And so we're building out all of our content as we go. But the Beave is an incredible river. If you get a chance to fish it, you definitely should. It's not a secret. Beave is pretty crowded. There's a lot of fishermen on the Beave, and you can see that from some of those background shots. But it is well worth the time to go and fish that river. Always be courteous. Always be polite to each other, of course. Don't forget to subscribe. Ring that bell. That way you get notified when we have new stuff coming out. Give me a thumbs up if you like those big fish. There's more of that and even bigger coming up. And leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. I just think the Beaverhead River is a great place to start when you're talking about tailwater fly fishing tactics and nymph and indicator rigs for monster trout because the Beav has got them. I am Mike Pulaski. Until next time, I'll see you on the next piece of Familiar Waters.